Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bunbun. This is our sunny season one, episode seven reaction and review. I have a message. I have a transmission that's coming into my head here. My robot programming. It's telling me we are so back. We are so back, everybody. Episode seven is fire. This is the best episode <laughs> of the show since maybe episode two in my head. I, I was 90% all in on this episode. I had so much fun with this episode. Sunny being reprogrammed to be like a bad robot. It was so funny to like want to fight everybody. I was just like, he may listen. I know you tried to reprogram Sunny so that she's like a merc that wants to kill everybody, yeah. but instead you just made a robot with a bad attitude <laughs> who's just like that drunk guy at the bar who wants to fight everybody. And you put on a Bruno Mars song on the jukebox, and then he rolls up because he wants Miley Cyrus. Is like, you want to fight about it? You want to fight about it? How many it's bars have like... you been to lately? <laughs> There's always that guy at the bar that wants to fight about it. And now you got Sunny and she's just rolling around being like, you want to fight about it? See, <laughs> one, that is amazing. Two, this is also me if I don't have coffee in the morning. <laughs> I I just really enjoyed it. I like the idea that briefly it seemed like Sunny wanted to be a Mortal Kombat character. <laughs> I like the idea that they had to reset Sunny again. Like we got into all of these little nuances with the robot. But then we also got this big search through the building after they discover mm -hmm. the tracker. And then this sort of leads to this big reveal at the end of the episode that we'll get all the more into yeah. that Yuki, who is the guy we saw at the very start yeah. of this season, it just so turns out that he is in the building. What does it mean? Yeah, it means a lot. Speaking of buildings, yeah. Only Murders in the Building <laughs> is coming back August 27th. So if you're looking for another murder mystery mystery thriller type yeah. show that's going to be coming up we're going to be covering that here at the channel so make sure you hit that subscribe button and stick with us also for just five dollars a month you can support us over at our patreon we have a link in the description below you can vote on polls suggesting what show we're going to cover next and thank you of course to all of our patrons for your support it thank means you. the world to us okay so let's continue talking about Hime and what happened to the counselor because at the yeah. beginning of this whole show we saw you know the counselor was dead there's you know robot blood tracks it's like oh my goodness this is robots killing people no, he makes just pushing the robot down the stairs on top of the counselor, and then the robot is rolling through the blood to go make pancakes. Like, she was not able to get the dark manual in time to really show her dad, listen, I got this, I can do this. So she staged this to look like she was able to kind of dark manual this robot, but really she just pushed this robot <laughs> down the stairs. And we have this really crazy like confrontation with her and Jin over who's going to be in the top spot now that her father has passed away. And, you know, it's not looking that great for Hime at the moment, especially when Jin is like, I know what you did with that robot. We all know what you did with that robot. See, the whole stuff with Hime and Jin, like that is... It's kind of sort of the 10% I'm still having a hard time getting fully on board with this show just because it's not my personal cup of tea. I don't typically like these stories about family and their enterprises and all of that sort of stuff. But I did love the idea of Hime staging this <laughs> robot accident because you know what it reminded me of? I grew up watching, you know, big surprise given what we cover, a ton of murder mysteries. And I would watch a lot of these like procedural shows. Like I was really into Monk and Psych on USA and I... I think it might have been Monk. I, all of them kind of blend together in my head over a while. But there was an episode where it seemed like a monkey or a chimpanzee actually <laughs> killed somebody. And they went through this whole thing. It's like, oh, the monkey did it. And it was like, no, the monkey didn't do it. Somebody just made it so that the murder weapon was with the monkey. And it, it, that this was totally reminiscent of that. We spent all this time thinking, okay, yeah. Sunny is capable. These homebots are capable of all of it. But really, mm -hmm. it cements further that okay, what's really going on here is that he may want to reprogram these robots. And it seems like this whole organization may want to use these robots, but they're not really there yet. She's just trying to prove herself as a capable leader. Yeah, and it looks like the 
best she can do is reprogram Sunny to try to fight people <laughs> and have a bad attitude and watch TV all day and just not be helpful, which is something, I guess, but it's not what the organization wants. It is the first time mm -hmm. this season that I cared at all about Hime and her family and the organization. I just haven't cared about it. That's not really my bag in general. But this episode was great for that. It made me way more invested in what's going on with that. And a lot of it is because Sunny. I think it's just better to know that Hime is kind of bumbling in some aspects when it comes to what she's trying to do. <laughs> yeah. And it's not as it's not sort of as slick or prototypical as I might have thought kind of coming in to all of this. Okay, let's talk about these trackers because this is the big, here's my tinfoil hat. All right, okay, guys, all right. everybody Got put it on, on Got it your on. tinfoil Let's hats. do it. Okay, so St Susie learned that there are trackers. There's three trackers. And she was kind of like, oh, this tracker has only been on since yesterday. So there's, there's only so many people who could have put this tracker on. And she's like the only... Only person it could be is Sunny. There's nobody else. And Mixie's standing beside her being like, yeah, it's <laughs> only Sunny because I wasn't also here all day, all night and in your bed. It's so weird to me that Susie just won't look at Mixie. I know that she has sort of been like, oh, maybe it could be you. But she's never seriously looked at Mixie. And the idea that Mixie would just be like, oh, for sure. The only only person that was here was Sunny. It can only be Sunny. But she was also there. Like, I'm not saying for sure it's Mixie, but like the fact that nobody's looking at her, it's kind of like when we were covering Presumed Innocent and nobody was looking at Barbara and it's like she had the biggest motive to do this murder. Like not one person even asked her a question. This whole tracker business is fascinating because I understand what you're saying here about Mixie and I have been fully living in Delulu land when it comes to Mixie for several weeks now where I want to just believe that Mixie is a friend. Now, by saying that, I also acknowledge that there's not a lot of candidates as to who could have done some of this. The other thing is just like, why is Mixie putting up with this? Like, <laughs> we see that... Susie's gone through a lot with losing friends. She's not great at keeping friends. There's the whole like D message that's coming in. Who's like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Stop contacting me. You blew it. Yeah. And Susie has admitted that she's real. She's a really crappy friend. And we've seen what a crappy friend she is. Where Mixie finally is like, I have lost my job. Like <laughs> I'm with you all the time. Things are not great for me. And everything is about you all the time. Right before Susie or Sunny like rolled up and is like, you want to fight about it? And punched her <laughs> in the stomach. I'm right? shocked when that happened. <laughs> but it's like, Mixie yeah. is right. Like Susie is treating her so badly as a friend. All she's doing is taking. She's not giving back. Mixie's whole life is falling apart. And at some point I was just like, why is Mixie putting up with this? She can't just be putting up with it because she's like a doormat friend, right? Like maybe she's there planting a tracker. Okay. I don't know. I am sort of in this weird sort of mindset now where I'm sort of wondering is Mixie, I don't want to say working for Masa, but is Mixie tied to Masa in a way that we don't really know? I mean, you're clearly onto something with this idea that, okay, there wasn't a lot of other people who could have done something with this tracker. And then I'm also connecting it to, okay, who else is tied to these trackers from what we have seen so far? Mm -hmm. We have Noriko, who is busy yep. reenacting her own version of Orange is the New Black at the moment. And I mean, I'll be honest, I I don't necessarily need to see as much Noriko in the prison as we've gotten. I sort of understand what's going on here. But then we also have who turns out to be Yuki. And ultimately, I'm sitting here and being like, okay, who is going to be able to track and identify these particular points and right. where all these people are? Is this something that... Hime is going to really know when it comes to Yuki in particular. This is the guy that I'm sort of wrapping my brain around, trying to figure out what's going on here. And this is why all roads lead me back to Masa Road, because it does feel like, okay, Yuki is responsible for bringing Susie Sunny. So 
And it also seems like before before Sonny started to have a bad day and before Sonny started punching people. You want to fight about it? Yeah. Before before Sonny went into that, it actually did seem like Sonny was a portrait of her creator. And so yeah. I think that Yuki is either good or good adjacent. And I think Masa is off somewhere, whether it's wherever Do Not Answer is or some of that stuff or somewhere else entirely. I think Masa is alive and I think Masa is trying to, at the very least know where certain people are and if they're tracking bugs or whatever haven't been discovered maybe he thinks that that means they're safe yeah yuki is the big puzzle in all of this because you know i would see you know moss is probably behind this like why why else would yuki have a tracker on him he may i don't think even would really know about him really but so if we're going to have one on Noriko, that makes sense for Masa. You're going to have yeah. one on Susie. That makes sense for Masa. Yuki also makes sense because this is the person who gave Sunny to Susie. So you would probably want your one connection to, you know, the robots and everything that all the work he's been doing in Dark Manual. Yuki's got to be really down the hole with this Dark Manual. And I think that he's the contact. It makes the most sense that he is the contact because I think with Sonny at this point, there's only a few episodes left. We're not that far from the end of the road. There's no guarantee if there's going to be another season. I'm I'm worried there's not going to be another season. I don't think there's another I, season coming. Not I, enough people are watching this show. Tell your friend. Yeah, I, it, I, that, I mean, it's a whole frustration <laughs> I have going on right now. It's just like, where's the promotion? Where's like the I buzz? Know. But it's a you. We all claim. That we want unique shows. And, you know, you you and I are certainly in the we want unique shows camp. And right. then when we finally get a unique show, everybody's too busy watching, you know, X Revival or like, you know, the 20th season of some reality franchise. And so here we are. But it does feel like you guys have to find a way to get us to an answer when it comes to Masa. I don't think this season is going to end without us knowing where Masa is and what happened to him. And if that is the case, you have to incorporate somebody who actually has answers and we both seem to believe here yuki has answers he probably can deliver some of them but there's probably also a pretty good reason why he hasn't done it so far yeah i mean he's obviously protecting something and just because Susie has found him doesn't mean he's gonna give those answers i think a lot of it's gonna depend on how much Susie's willing to share like if she's willing to share with him that he may have been after her, had a drill to her head, you know, threatening to kill her, all of that type of stuff. If she reveals that to him and Yuki is kind of the the protector, like the, the in-between between Masa and Susie of helping to protect with Sunny. And now Sunny's not even protecting her. She's running around trying to fight everybody <laughs> that maybe if she presents it that way, he will be like, okay, you know what? Enough is enough. Now we have to call do not answer. Yeah. And I do it. Just go ahead, do it. Give the call so we can start to organize things. What I really like about where we are in the season now and what this episode really presented to us is that everybody is searching for something. And that's not something yeah. I was fully clear on until this episode, because I thought that that homebot actually killed the counselor. And yeah. now that we know that that is not the case, we're suddenly in this spot where clearly he may wants to prove her value. And clearly a way to prove your value apparently is to access the dark manual, convert all of these robots into fighting machines, characters in your favorite fighting game, whatever else. So they're really desperate to do that. And at this point, I think it's pretty clear Masa and Susie and all them, they're very, very much intent on stopping it. And we have these forces now that are on a little bit of a collision course. And so it's a little bit of who's going to find Masa first. And then what are they going to do with them when they find him? Because this is the thing. You can go and find Masa if you're him. But that doesn't mean Masa is going to help you. Sure, you can try to do to him whatever you tried to do to Susie earlier this season. But is it going to work? I think now that we're at episode seven, I would have liked to have seen a little more of Susie discovering w what the power dynamics are and what the power struggle is. Like, mm -hmm. you know, she knows that he may after the dark manual, but she doesn't know why. She knows that Masa was working with this dark manual, but she doesn't know why. So 
because she doesn't know why she doesn't really know what she's looking for. And part of the problem with the season for me has felt like because I'm following Susie and she doesn't exactly know what she's looking for. I have also felt like I just don't know what we're looking for. Like it's such a, it's just kind of a mess and mm -hmm. the, the threads aren't threading together in a way that she's able to put together anything by this episode, episode seven, mm -hmm. there's only a couple left she doesn't really understand what's happening at all. She just knows, you know, oh, he may want this dark manual, but not to create a bunch of like Merc robots, right? Like she doesn't know why and why this is happening. And I think if she did, then it would really feel like a race to get to Masa, where it feels like Susie's just looking for Masa because that's her husband. She's yeah. looking for her husband. She's looking for her kid. It's way less about the dark manual and more about finding her family which is fine. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, since they're not really racing for the same thing, it's kind of like, okay, well then <laughs> is anyone going to really stop these Mark robots from showing <laughs> up? Like Susie doesn't, that's not on the radar. I think how I sort of picture all of this in my head is just that the show has done a good job of creating mysteries, but at the same time, they haven't really told us which mysteries matter and which mysteries we need to follow until kind of sort of this week. And for Sonny, I mean, for Susie, especially like you just laid out, like there's never really been that much of a sense of clarity. But for us as viewers and as us as murder mystery fans, we like to follow breadcrumbs, right? right? We like to sort of say, OK, the big mystery at the end of this show is where is Masa? What is Masa doing? Why did Masa fake his own death if he did fake his own death? And so that's sort of did. this big, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> obvious to us that he did, but that's sort of the big mystery. And so we have these breadcrumbs that are supposed to lead us there. But because you've also introduced Team A and you've also got these questions about what Hime's end game is and all of this, you basically have opened up a jar of breadcrumbs and you've just dumped them all over the room. And now we don't know where to go anymore. And it wasn't until this episode that we started to kind of see a trail where it's like, okay, he made breadcrumbs are actually leading to the same place. And <laughs> we've been able to figure this out, but Susie hasn't been able to fully figure this out. And so, yeah, it's kind of created a little bit more confusion than I think Sonny, the show needed. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of tough because Masa, Hime, and Suzy are all on these different paths that are all kind of leading to the same place, kind of, sort of, right? Yeah. Like we said, Hime's trying to create, like, a group of Merc robots, and then you've got Masa, who we think, you know, maybe accidentally created a killer robot that he didn't want to have happen and mm -hmm. he didn't want to do that. And he's trying to erase what he did. And then you have Susie who's just like, where's my husband? Yeah. And it's kind of like, okay, all of these roads will lead into the same place. But when they get there, is Susie just going to be like, I don't care about this dark manual. It doesn't concern me. So like, if he may want it, she can have it. I just want my husband. And that's where we're going to end up with it. It could very well be. It could be a situation where she says that the Masa and then Masa's like, oh, no, we also have to do this. And Susie's like, why do we have to do this? Yeah, and, why do I care? Yeah. And there could be another conflict that kind of spawns out of that. So I, I think there are some things that Sunny the show has not done perfectly. But I really appreciate with this episode in particular that they sort of have put all of this within the framework of a really more action heavy, intense episode where, you know, running through the building, trying to figure out the source of the tracker. Like that was one of the most intense sections we've had of the show so far. And I was yeah. really, really in on that. And I really enjoyed that. I still really enjoy the weirdness of, okay, here's how we're going to solve what's going on with Sunny. We're going to put Sunny back in front of the psychedelic trance, whatever <laughs> we want to call this. And at the very end of the episode, with the way in which Sunny speaks, it feels at least to me that, okay, old Sunny is coming back. You know, Sunny is no longer aggro, curmudgeon-y Sunny who's about to fight everybody. We're, we're going to get the good Sunny again in the next episode. But mm -hmm. I think exploring all that is just really, really fun. This is the stuff that this show does really well that makes it stand out. Absolutely. So that's where we are with Sunny at this point, moving into the final episodes. It feels like we're moving in the right direction again. Mm -hmm. The mystery is a little bit clearer. 
Yeah, I'm just hoping that everyone is held on with this show to get here because yeah. there have been uh, some problems with the show. There's definitely been some slower episodes that just didn't lead us really anywhere. That whole bear <laughs> forest nonsense. I want to I want to fight about it. <laughs> like it, it wasn't good. Like, but overall, if they can just get back to this where they they start to like connect things, they've taken too long to connect things. If you have stuck with this show with us, yeah. we're so glad that you have. I feel like it's going to give us some payoff. Like it, it, it's got to, right? Yeah, I feel really good that it's going to give us some payoff. And you know, I. I have been a defender of the forest episode, but I will. Also, I know. I will also sit here and admit. I know you want to fight about it. Not really. If you have like Sonny's fighting skills, I'm, I think I'm good. I do not need to be stocked in the stomach. But no, I, I, I can. I will admit that it didn't really get us anywhere when it comes to solving the mystery, and I think that is what this show needs to set out to do in these final episodes. But we're gonna be here. We're gonna talk all about it. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss out. Also, for $5 a month, you can support us further at our Patreon. We have a link in the description below. Thank you to everyone who has, and we'll see you here next time.